Retail investors have finally decided to get a little bit more aggressive and stay there. I think it's too early to make that call. You know, we saw in early last year, we saw some green shoots of optimism and then uh, problems in the United States with our governmental system, problems in Europe with uh, dealing with their debt crisis. Um, it really slowed down and we had a, we had a, a, a much uh, less resilient year than we'd hoped for in the first quarter. So I think it's too early to call the turn. We know in the long term, investors can't possibly reach their goals saving for retirement without some more substantial exposure to equities. But in the short term, I think a couple weeks of, of positive data is really too, too small a set to call the turn. So how are you responding to this fact that I think even the retail investor probably knows that bonds will not do it for them long term. What are you trying to do to either instill confidence or provide new product offerings or have the investor change the way they're thinking about things? We're telling our clients that you need to be constant in your asset allocation. What's happened to too many clients is they've gotten afraid with the market volatility. They've withdrawn and gone into cash perhaps. A and they're facing a difficult problem with zero uh, real yielding cash, with perhaps too much exposure to bonds when bonds are becoming increasingly risky. They've inadvertently allowed fear to dictate their asset allocation. Most institutional investors, I think, are in a better spot with more discipline. But both really need to stay the course. You need to have a conservative asset allocation, which understands that the world is a volatile place and there's downside, but you need to maintain a consistent uh, exposure to equities. After all, equities have returned better than 100% since uh, early 2009. You can't afford to miss those periods with fear-based market timing. So you've got to stay constant in your asset allocation. So tell me about some of the products that you're introducing that addresses asset allocation in perhaps a more unique way than, than some are familiar with. Thank you. Uh, the, the newest thing that we're delivering to the asset allocation front is a product uh, called Diversified Alternatives uh, built off our liquid risk premium platform. And the idea here is investors have a problem. They've been sold asset allocation, which is it's diversified by name. They have equities, they have small cap, large cap, U.S., non-U.S., they have bonds of all different flavors. Perhaps they have some alternatives and they have some commodities. But when you add all these things up, while the labels may be very different, underneath it all, the return streams are highly correlated. In fact, uh, equity usually explains for most investors, equity risk premium broadly defined usually explains almost 90% of the variance in their portfolios. So even though the names are diversified, the underneath it's not diversified. So we have a new fund, our Diversified Alternatives Fund, and we have a new liquid uh, risk premium platform that we're offering investors access to things like uh, uh, small versus large cap stocks, uh, growth versus value. If you put together a portfolio of these kind of bets, each of which is independent of movements in the stock market, each of which is independent of rate risk, you can end up with a very controlled uh, risk product with good risk return that is not correlated with stocks, not correlated with bonds, and really helps people fill out their asset allocation uh, in a way that is helpful because most of us, frankly, have too much uh, equity and rate risk and we're concerned and we're looking for places to get other and there aren't that many good places to go which are, which are reasonably priced, which are liquid, which are transparent, and that's what we're offering people. So how do you sell that to somebody who's going to argue, you know, I'll just buy a couple of ETFs, passively managed ETFs, right. I'll buy a bunch of different slices of ETFs, and I'll be just fine. Well, I think there are two problems with that argument. The first problem is when you buy a bunch of different slices of ETF, broadly speaking, all you're getting is sort of one risk, which is broadly defined equity risk. And we think for proper asset allocation, you need to have some diversified risks. That's the first thing. The second thing is I think people are enamored with this idea that they can buy passive through ETFs and win the game. In the last couple of years, we've seen equity markets post-2008 crisis at really high correlation levels. Correlations uh, among stocks, stocks all moving the same direction on the same day, has been at record highs. It hasn't been that high since 1937. So 2010 and 2011 were record high stock correlation years. What does that mean? It means that's a really terrible environment for active managers. It's therefore unsurprising that looking at recent history that these passive investments have done well compared to active managers. But in 2012 and continuing, correlations have come way down. And they're, they're much more consistent with normal historic levels. In that environment, active managers do much better against passive managers. And so if your investors look to recent past, they may say, hey, I can just buy these passive indices and I'll beat most of the active managers and I'll do fine. But I think if you're not looking backwards, if you're looking forward and you understand the correlations involved, when stock market correlations at a more normal level, 
You should expect much better returns from your active managers, and I think that's what you're going to get, which is why we're optimistic at Janus. Very briefly, let me ask you the biggest risk you're worried about this year, whether internally for the company or externally. The biggest risk I'm worried about this year would be that uh, Europe goes back into crisis and really damages the, the growing confidence in the equity markets.